It's a bit windy. <laughs> Sup everyone. I thought I'd start the video this morning just because I've been out paddling on the paddle board and I don't think you guys have ever seen it on the channel. Um, I'm at a really nice man-made lake. I've camped here a few times. It's got a man-made beach, loads of wild swimmers and stuff come down here. And I actually camped there last week on the hottest day of the year when it was 40 degrees. I came down here with Ben, we did a bivy bag camp and ended up spending two days pretty much just drinking and swimming in the lake. I did film it, but the video's not going out because when I got back to edit it, we were basically drunk on gin most of the video. It wasn't very good. The audio was terrible because I tried the mic again. Um, so anyway, I sacked it off. But hopefully the title of the video suggests that I'll be camping on a roundabout near a police station today. I know people have done roundabouts and stuff before, but I want to up the ante. It doesn't have much cover there. I'm hoping it's going to happen. I haven't even wrecked it yet or anything. Uh, so we'll see how we get on. But if not, I'll just cycle around the town until I find a suitable spot. But the next time I see you, I'll probably be out on the pushy. So I'll catch you in a sec. And we're back. I'm about a mile into my journey so far. Here's the steed. Got a little mushy sticker on the back there. All well, my kit strapped on. I've had to tape the seat up already because I went off a curb the other night and the seat just came off and I forgot to take it into work to put it back on the post. But anyway, it's an Ella Glide T1 trekking bike. I need to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. I've had the bike about a month now and I've been going out maybe two, three nights a week after work in the evenings. I've got this really nice little sunset spot. If you follow me on Instagram, then you might have seen some of my stories. Basically just me out cycling. But it's a really warm day. It's cloudy though and it's windy. I've just pulled into a little farmer's bit. There's a silo here, just surrounded by fields. The roads aren't too busy into town. I haven't got a helmet. I know, probably should, but I don't. Oh, the motor just runs away with it. Let me put the assist on lower. It's got full auto as well, which is pretty cool. It assists you up to like 25 kilometers an hour. I'm not really a bike geek. I don't know too much about them, but it does what I want. It's like a podium, but it's actually the horse rider dismount. Oh, well in lads, first place. So Greg, how was it in the race? How are you feeling? Well, I was actually feeling really confident, you know, I pushed out real early, got a great lead. Uh, every lap I was just gaining two, three seconds, nobody could keep up. So uh, yeah, really confident, thanks very much. I'd like to thank all my sponsors, cheers. This never used to be here. The last time I was down here was probably Oh, it's got to have been at least 10, 12 years ago. There used to just be a wooden fence there with a gate that you used to just cross the tracks on. This just shows how lazy the human race has got, doesn't it? I'm on full auto mode. I haven't even had to pedal, I'm just using the throttle. That's <laughs> just pulling me up. We are lazy, lazy people.
I've reached the place that I want to get to. It's quite busy, there's loads and loads of traffic. But there's the roundabout. So I'm just going to have to bomb it, I'm just going to have to go for it. This is where I am. If anyone's curious to know, I'm in Bose Edmonds, just past Sainsbury's, Morton Hall Sainsbury's. There's a popular truckers cap up there. But I'm literally just going to bomb it on there. There's basically a ring of trees or a ring of bushes on the inside of the roundabout. I'm trying to find a spot that's as secluded as I can get. <laughs> Wish me luck. I'll try film it. Apologies for the uh, shaky camera while I get on there, but see if I can get it. Let's go, let's go. Right, we're on, we're on. Let's put the bike down. Let's get the kit down, stay low. <laughs> That's it, we've done it. Well, that was actually really easy. Just at the perfect time, no cars were coming, so. If I lean forward and look to my right, I think any cars coming round the roundabout will be able to see me. There's a gap over there, you can see the cars going round. I'm interested in pushing into this little middle bit. I've got a basher with me, and I wanna go in front of there as well, because that's where the police station is, down that road just on the left. So I'm trying to push out of that bit there to get round to the front. I'm just waiting for that junction to be clear. Right, right we're good to go. Let's go. Oh, that's really, really open. It's all open round here. <laughs> it's so exposed. Might have to be that middle bit or round the back where I came in. Let's stand up police station's just there. And this is one of the main entrances in and out of town. I probably should camp in this bit, but the ground is awful. So I think I'm gonna stick to the outside bits. <laughs> this is funny, isn't it? But this is gonna be the spot, I reckon, just under this little bush here. Worst case scenario, if it does start raining today or tonight, I can just flip the bike upside down and I'll just pull the basher off the bike. But in the meantime, and while I'm not using it, it's kind of in the way. I think I'm gonna stash the bike in the middle of the roundabout, give me a bit more space. I'll take the kit off and all that first. And then I'll get my roll mat out so I've got somewhere comfortable to sit. I've got a cam net as well to put across the bush. I think I found where I'm gonna sleep. I'll sleep lengthways here because there's a really dark bit of trap shadow in there that's not going to see any sunlight. I can't see any cars through it. So that's where I'll park myself. I'll put the cam net into the side where the gap in that bush is. So I'm just going to clear the ground a little bit and get my bed squared away. Celebrate with a hazy. <laughs> Hashtag stealth camping. As a veteran, I find the term stealth camping quite cheesy to be honest. But what else do you call it, I guess? We're on and I'm happy. As I say, I hadn't checked this roundabout at all before I came here. To so drive around this roundabout few times a week and uh, I saw that there was grass in the middle and I saw there was a middle cop so I thought yeah it's doable if I'm gonna do a roundabout camp I go big and camp on a smaller roundabout I wanted to do a roundabout camp for a while now if you're a regular viewer of the channel you'll probably know that I ended up going to a roundabout and it was full of crackheads basically um, so I, I left it so I thought why not do one that's right next door to a police station and one of the main entrances to town and one that doesn't have too much cover on there Cam net's gone up just to close off that gap. No one should be able to see in here now. 
especially not if you're just driving past. I mean, if you were staring, looking for it, the trained eye would be able to spot it, but your average everyday person driving past, I don't think so. Handy bits of kit. For water, I'm just using my issued Camelback. I think you get three litres in there. Just on a straw. Real handy. You want front screen, trap shadow, and backdrop. You need at least two out of the three, really, to be pretty concealed. So behind me, I've got the backdrop of just the bushes and a little bit of cam net. We've got the shadow from the bushes. No sun's getting in through here. And then we've got our front screen out where the feet go. I mean, we've got to be careful on this side a little bit because the cam net's not 100% concealing it. If I move around with these bright orange trousers on too much, you might be able to see through. I've had to think about headlights as well at night time, obviously. So there's a junction for the roundabout there, which I came up on. The headlights really should be pointing in front of me the way the angle of the road goes. So I shouldn't be bothered here. Shouldn't get any light coming through there at all. To be honest, I just thought it might add a little bit of cool factor to do it near a police station. That's the only other reason. I wanted to do this, and as I said, I wanted to make it bigger and better than what I've seen, so there you go. Here's the full setup then. I put the basher on the ground in the end, just to give me a little bit of cushioning from the leaves, but it still leaves it a little spongy, which is nice, with the foam mat on top bivy bag i've gone back to the jungle bag just because it packs down smaller in my kit than uh, the new one i've been using still got my pillow camelback and then that's just covering my food on my camera bag what a cool little spot and you can still see the cars the whole roundabout is probably 20 meters across here's a police van moving in Looks like it's gonna absolutely hoss it down. It's still only what, half three? getting busy it's kick out time at work now this bungee is just about hanging on still going just started raining I've just been doing a little bit of people watching <laughs> I feel like a right pervert looks weird doesn't it looks proper weird right now so the next community camp is going to be on the 26th 27th and 28th of next month August and it's gonna be up north in Scarborough. I'm only gonna be able to have 40 guests due to the size of the wood, which is still big enough to accommodate us all. But yeah, we're gonna limit it to 40 people, free entry, but we're gonna expect a donation to a mental health charity that we're gonna decide. So if you wanna to apply to come to that, that would be really awesome to see you there. Just email eastanglianbushcraft at gmail.com. I'll leave it in the bio. It would be nice if we could kind of have Northern people apply first. I know we're not gonna be able to police that. Um, but the reason why we're having one up north is to accommodate the people that couldn't travel down south. So if you're northern and you want to come, get in there straight away. Cheers.
for my cook kit then I've just got this Wild Camping International titanium pan which I normally use when I pack in my kit light. I've got the MSR Pocket Rocket 2 which was gifted to me for my charity walk by Kent CBD, shout out to you. Got a little windshield and then it's quite a big canister, it's probably about a quarter full. Butane propane mix. I've somehow lost one of the handles on this pan. <laughs> So I've got a leather glove just to pick the pan up with instead, otherwise it's really dodgy. Sweet chilli chicken stir fry. Cooked on a roundabout next to a police station. Shout out to Off Camping for the roundabout inspiration. He's done like 10, 11 roundabouts. Fair play to you, mate. Cheers, dude. Burning the patchouli incense. Got a little box of Planet Pale. I didn't bring too many beers for obvious reasons. And then I got a little Tessie meal deal for tomorrow. I actually slept pretty well to be honest, I didn't wake up at all in the night. Traffic's just started picking up because it's going to be morning rush hour in about 10 minutes. So I'll probably be sitting here as I have been, not doing a lot. But it's quite funny because I can hear people talking in the cars because they're about 2 metres away from where I've been sleeping. I've heard all different sorts of music genres. Out of interest, does anyone watch the UFC? Because I was watching Paddy the Baddy the other night. One thing I still suffer with as a sideline to PTSD is called hypervigilance. I'll put a picture up now which just explains it basically to the, to the letter. But that's something that I still struggle with. I view a lot of situations as potentially hostile when there's probably no reason to think that. Because of Paddy's mental health shout out the other night, I thought I'd open up a little bit more. Again, it is good to talk, talk to someone. I was chatting to a mental health expert on Instagram and apparently hypervigilance is a really common thing that comes with PTSD. I'm just sharing the knowledge for people that might not be educated or they might be feeling like that and they don't really know why. Talk to someone, it's healthy, you'll feel a lot better, trust me. I want to give a big shout out to Gibraltar Trading Company, GTC, ex-Royal Marine and firefighter owned, really good gear. Thanks for the t-shirt, I've got a band on there that says Stay Wavy, I've been wearing that for like, I don't know, a few weeks now. I'll put his links in the bio, he's on Instagram. Really nice guy, so I just wanted to share his brand, Gibraltar Trading Company, thanks dude. Bike is secure, kit's packed up. Just gonna tighten the bars up with the Allen keys, load all the kit up onto the bike, take the net down, and then we're off. Okay, 
okay, bike's loaded up. And I've got my rubbish there, which I'm just gonna put on the handlebars until I get to the Sainsbury's, which is maybe four or 500 meters over there. All right, let's go. This is Dodge. Busy as. <laughs> We're off. Well then. Just makes the hills complete light work. <laughs> 